Hello friends, welcome to another session of Shomu's Biology's, you know, animal cell culture series. And in the previous video, we have seen the properties of primary cells and primary cell culture. Now in this video, we'll be talking about the secondary cell culture and what are the other names of secondary cell culture and the process of secondary cell culture. Advantages of it, disadvantages of it. So let's talk about it. Here we go, the primary cell uh, cell culture there. So we take the organism, we take the cell from, from the organ, we place it into the medium, cells start to grow, they are called primary cells. Now once they start to grow and cover the whole medium as a primary cell, those cells are morphologically, physiologically and biochemically same as the parent cell. That's a very good thing. They also have same karyotype and they have less differentia differentiated ability. So the cell differentiation is not actually occurred during this process. So it makes them ideal to study for our purposes. But they have a problem that they have finite number of divisions after that they will die. They don't have any huge growth and for their development and growth it's not that easy in in vitro situation. Now once we reach this situation we know that this cell start to die after certain divisions, certain number of divisions. So what we need to do, we sometimes need to, you know, make a copy of the cells. So we take some cells from this primary cell culture and place it into another media so that those cells continue to grow, right? So that first change, I mean transfer of the cell. So let me see here, this is another media, right? And we just transfer the cell from this primary cells into here the other media and then the cells start to grow. Now this second mode and the change I mean taking the cell from one culture to another is called as the subculturing process. So it is called as subculture and this is the first subculture that we have done here right because this is done the, for the first time that this first transfer this won't count as a subculture because this is direct culture but this is subculture that is from a culture to another culture subculture process is done from the sub after the subculture we have a set of cells again now those set of cells will be termed as in many different ways many different names so the names actually are they can be termed as you know secondary secondary cells and this whole culture process is, will be termed as secondary culture because primary culture, this is secondary culture. It is also termed as cell line, cell lines. It can be termed as, you know, it can be finite cell culture. It can be termed as continuous cell culture, it can be termed as, you know, restricted cell culture or something like that. So let us take only up to this mark that is, it can be termed as secondary cells, cell lines, finite cell culture, continuous cell culture and so on and many more different names. But all of these names are secondary subculture but not the primary cells because primary culture is the only name that is primary culture rest of the thing is the secondary one. It can be continuous, it can be finite or it can be you know, it can and this is also uh, called as a cell lines but it can be of finite or continuous. So any cell line that we consider or any secondary cells that we take, they can be of two different types, finite, continuous and many more types but majorly two, finite and continuous. They can be of other types like uh, uh, restricted and uh, many more. Now in this case this continuous and finite, so what are these different things? So first of all if you look at the finite cell culture that is a type of secondary cell culture or cell lines or finite cell line means again those cells that we take here. The cells will divide and grow up to a particular number of times, number of generations and then ultimately will die just like the primary cells that we talk here. So the, they will grow and die. So grow and eventually die. On the other hand, the second one is the continuous 
continuous culture continuous culture means theoretically actually it means the cells will grow infinite number of times provided the fact if we continuously supply its medium that means the nutrients and other important resources for its growth that is oxygen supplement and all the nutrient sources then they will continuously grow and divide infinite number of times right that is termed as a continuous some other types like immortal cell culture is also there theoretically they are immortal that means they will continue to grow and divide grow and divide throughout the generation throughout the time if we continuously supply their nutrient source they are called immortal type so these are the different types different names uh, of uh, the secondary cell culture depending upon the different properties and uh, you know uh, other things now here in the finite cell or the continuous whatever both the types you know in finite type they will grow and ultimately die just like the primary but they are not primary we know because we have already done a subculture here now the finite cell culture what happens actually they start from a particular uh, journey start from a particular number of cells they will start to increase rise and ultimately they will fall and they will ultimately die right but still in continuous culture why they are growing infinite number of times because you know in this case of continuous culture what happens to this finite cultures because actually continuous cultures are produced from finite cells or finite cell lines because the finite cell lines have some type of chemical modifications inside any kind of chemicals or physical modifications of the cell will turn those finite cell lines into infinite ones right how that is called the differentiation that is called the you know transformation of those finite cells so let me write it here it is called as transformation and the transformation is here in this case in vitro remember because whatever thing we are doing here is in vitro so it is in vitro transformation of those finite cells into the continuous or immortal cells uh, cell types right we know that in, in body also in any kind of chemical agents or carcinogenic agents can come it can change and alter do some mutations inside the cell and ultimately turn the cell into the tumorous cells malignant cells that will grow and divide grow and divide and it will create huge mass of cells like cause tumor and all these things we know that and those tumor cells you know they are not very much growth dependent uh, type or growth obedient they will grow according to their wish not any other medium component they will produce their own growth factor they will nourish them they will nourish their own and then finally grow and divide and differentiate immortally continuously throughout the time right that thing happens in vitro and in this case we actually influence them to be transformed into those tumorous cells because we sometimes require a huge mass of cells of same type and this is the only way to get same type of cells in very small amount of time because if we if we add all those chemical factors if we add or change those genetic makeup of the finite cells in such a way that it can turn into a tumorous cell it can turn into the cancerous cell it will continuously grow and finally give us huge mass of cell which we can work with right so in this case the secondary type or secondary type of cell in finite cell the advantage is, is that in finite cell is also have certain type of similarity with the primary cell with respect to morphology and physiology but they are having some differentiation pattern those cells have certain differentiation signals some of the cells can be differentiated so they are not exactly same like primary but they have a very high degree of similarity with the parent cell so they are good to work with they are also easy uh, to work with but once you talk about the continuous cell you know continuous cells are you know hard to kill they will grow and grow and easily grow they grow in very fast rate so in all aspects of all these cells continuous cell lines are the type which we can use we can handle pretty well they have less contamination chances they grow very fast they grow predominantly they produce their own growth growth factors so we don't need to take care of them very much as we need to do for primary cells or uh, you know finite number of cells finite cell lines 
So the continuous cell lines and this, these all properties of continuous cell lines make them as the most you know loved cell culture or cell lines among all. So scientists really want to do research with these continuous cell lines or cancerous or tumorous cell lines. Example of this cell line is HeLa, HeLa cell. That is the cell coming from Henrietta Lacks who, who, is, uh, who is having a fatal uh, cervical cancer. So HeLa is a cell which is a, in a continuous or infinite cell line. That cell is continuously growing and dividing and we are providing the media and it is continuously growing. Actually this cell is the epithelial cell of the cervix and that is transformed into this type of continuous cell by human papillomavirus 18 or HPV, HPV 18 infection. It turned and caused this for cell to be transformed from finite to infinite cell line. And now we are dealing with this infinite cell line a lot. We are researching with this HeLa cell line a lot nowadays because it is having those all features that are required for a cell uh, culture to establish and also they will grow very fast and contamination chances are rare, easy to handle, easy to work with, that's what we are dealing with. So in a sense this is all about the secondary culture. You know this is a lot of difference with the primary cells because primary cells though they are similar but hard to work with, easily susceptible to infection, secondary cell lines on the other hand like the continuous more importantly have or bypass all this disadvantage and we can work with them. But the disadvantage is the only thing and the disadvantage is we may not know how they react exactly once they, those cells are placed inside because you know these cells are transformed cells. So they don't have all the properties like the normal cell must have of the parent, right? So in that case, maybe we add some, say some, we are looking at uh, the effect of environmental effect. We are looking at this transformed cell. They will behave something. We have hypothesized a thing. But once we are looking at in vivo, the thing is different because the cell in vivo and in vitro here have higher or order of difference because these cells are now transformed, their chemical means are changed, their biochemical path pathways are altered. So this is a problem, only problem with these continuous cells. But from these primary cells, as we are going on, as we are subculturing and subculturing, we are losing some of the important properties from the parent cell and we are producing some newer order of cells that we are going towards the continuous. So that is the only problem with continuous cell culture. But still people do continuous cell culture because people study some of the very important things inside them because they are, you know, huge advantages are there, right? So, so these primary cell culture processes are, are so tough and so difficult, people don't actually, uh, the success rate to work with primary cell is very less. That's why people are using this. And primary cell is very much costlier too, right? Because, you know, in each time you need to take the organ, organ transplantation, organ storage, cryopreservation, many things required which is not possible for all research facilities to provide. So that's why people do continuous work with continuous or infinite cell culture processes there.